as we are preparing. We're live. We're live on Facebook. Awesome. We're crossing our fingers. The connection is good. And we're going to, I'm going to pull up my phone and pull up my comments, which you can do if you, you've probably had practice by now since you've been on with us so many times. <laughs> yes. There. Okay. Jana. Hi, Jana. Tori. Hi, Tori, Hi, Tori and Jana. <laughs> okay. We've got two people at least. Woo! So at least I think this awesome makes people. <laughs> I very two very awesome people. I think this makes for an official conversation. <laughs> um, hi. It said it so good morning, Tiffany. It says people are watching. If you don't say hi, it doesn't necessarily tell me you're there. Would love for you to say hi so we can say hi back. This is our last coffee with a guest pastor. And I'm pretty sure our first coffee with the guest pastor was Kendall. <laughs> Weren't you the first one? I think, yes, yeah, I was. So, yeah, the, um, the, the capstone to this season of Coffee with the Pastor is here this week with Kendall as our final guest. And Matt, Fran, and I will be live on Thursday. And then we'll tell you guys about some exciting new stuff we've got planned for the fall. We're not going to disappear, but we are going to recreate and reimagine um, what things are looking like, like we like to do regularly. And so um, I'm going to just go ahead and introduce Kendall because uh, I want her to be able to talk and just say hello if you're signing on so we can say hi back. If you have any questions at any point, please put them in the comments. We really like questions and I'm sure Kendall will look at those and answer them as she can or at the end or something. Hi, Sierra. Um, oh, Tori said she's officially signing up for NSP buying a shirt today. Um, Tori, would you mind linking to the shirt? Can someone link to the shirt um, fundraiser and also link to the conference registration? That would be awesome. And um, let's see, she also said the boys, her sons and her have discovered a swallowtail butterfly in their backyard and they've been exploring and learning about those this morning. Love, Love that. Love it. Um, by the way, Texas was like record highs yesterday and tomorrow it's supposed to be a high of 88. So I'm very excited. Well, tell us about Colorado, Kendall. I don't, I don't know if you want to hear this, but yeah, it was, it was when I woke up yesterday morning, it was, I think it was 55 degrees. <sighs> um, yesterday was the coolest day we've had, I think, um, and then it, it warmed up in the afternoon, but it was still so like pleasant, like 72 or something. Oh my <laughs> you know, gosh, so. it's not fair. It's not right. Colorado is truly the best. Like you can't complain ever. It's it's mm -hmm. not miserable, at least when I when I go or where I go in Boulder. Yeah. It's not really miserable ever. It's just perfect. <sighs> yeah. I haven't I haven't lived through a winter here yet, so I'm not sure what like I'm a little nervous about the snow, but yeah. I hear it's not too bad because it's not it's drier here. Yeah, that I don't know, but you can report back to us yep. in a few months. Um, Michael, hi, Michael. Good to see you on here. Janice said 55 degrees. It's cold. I agree. <laughs> but hey, oh my God, it sounds wonderful right now. Like you can drink the lot, the pumpkin spice or whatever in good conscience. Over here, yeah. we're just pretending if we were. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let me introduce Kendall because I, she has such a wonderful just background of wise woman badassery. And I want you to know about all the details. She's a preacher, she's a poet, she's a feminist theologian. Um, Kendall is the co-founder and co-director of the Nevertheless She Preached Conference. And for the last month, we've had board members and founders on for coffee with a guest pastor. And that's kind of what we're promoting. We want you to register for this event because it is a really incredible, really accessible. And if you were looking for a space to be led by black women, this is going to be the space. The, the main event is free this year. There's a lot of amazing workshops. Those cost like, I think $25 to register. Mm -hmm. um, just go check it out. This is for everybody. This is not a woman's conference. This is for everybody. We are mm -hmm. elevating feminine voices of color and on the margins. Um, and so, yes, I also wanted to show you Kendall's book. 
because Kendall's turning in her last chapter of her next book today. Day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Tell us the name. <laughs> yeah. So the title is Thy Queendom Come. And it's a, a feminist take on the on the kingdom of God. Yes. Oh my gosh. So needed. We talk about divine feminine a lot in our community, but we need more resources like this. We need Kendall's voice here. And while you're waiting for that book to get edited and published next spring, maybe. Yeah, it should be out in 2021. Maybe I think the summer. I'm not, I don't have a date yet. So while you're waiting, pick up this book or order it. Um, Kendall wrote this book several years ago, but it's amazing because it has a lot of her sermons here in essay form, as well as um, she talks about how like the, the art of preaching and that's very helpful for preachers and for pastors, but this is a very poetic book for everybody to read. Believe me, I've read it. <laughs> so um, anyway, Kendall is also a, um, a spiritual director, but previously to this, she's been a pastor and a senior pastor for nearly a decade in Baptist churches in Texas. Um, she, you guys, her bio was so awesome. Go to KendallRayRothis.com to read her full bio. Um, but I'm excited because she has entered into the world of spiritual direction and she is just such a wise, um, just comforting, I don't know, like accepting presence. I'm just so excited that people have access to you in this way. I don't know how else to say it. So um, I'm going to get stop talking and get off so Kendall can talk more about us. And if there's more you want to say about yourself, like we would love to hear it. So I'm just going to, I'm going to go. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that lovely introduction. And um, I appreciate the enthusiasm about my book on there. That's really fun. I'm excited. Um, so I thought that what I would talk to you guys about today um, is a little bit about what spiritual direction is. Um, I mean, we are living in some absurd and difficult times and it's so hard to stay grounded, so hard to stay connected um, to, to just even hold on to your sanity sometimes. Um, so what I want to say to you is that spiritual direction is one way, one practice you can look to for helping you to stay grounded. Um, but what is it? Well, the first thing I want to say about spiritual direction is that I sort of think spiritual direction is a terrible title. Um, I often refer to myself instead as a spiritual guide or some people use spiritual companion. Um, the word spirit or the phrase spiritual direction is really old and ancient and that's why it still is getting used today but the reason I don't like it is because it makes it sound like somebody is going to give you directions and tell you what to do um, spiritually and I don't know about you but I've had to work really hard in my life to break free from this dependency on external authority and recover my own internal authority. So the last thing I need is somebody else telling me what to do or think or believe. So I want to dispel any misconceptions that spiritual direction is about. Um, yeah, about someone standing over and above you telling you what to do. My approach to spiritual direction and the approach of most of the directors I know is that we want to help people access their own inner wisdom. So we believe you're the expert, that you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, guiding you, and that your own intuition and insight like that's what we want to get to and if you're anything like me life gets so noisy and hectic and there's so much to think about and deal with that I lose touch with um, that deep inner knowing that I have and of course, they have personal, spiritual, private practices to help me get back to that inner voice. But sometimes it's just really hard to do that work alone. 
So a spiritual director is somebody who, um, who knows how to cut through the clutter. Um, I, one way I describe it is it's, it's as if, um, it's as if the inner journey is made up of all this different terrain, right? And the terrain is like made up of, of how you've experienced God, but it's also made up of things like, um, what you've been taught to believe, how you've encountered church and religion. Um, it's made up of the ways that you've been harmed by religion and the ways that you've been helped by it. And it can get tricky to navigate all of that terrain and really find your true path. So a spiritual director is somebody who has experience navigating that inner terrain who can help guide you through it so you're not having to do it alone. Um, but it's not like it's not like a Google map, right? <laughs> that can tell you to turn right in 1.3 miles. A spiritual director is is just is someone who um, who's been there and therefore can walk with you. Um, so I would encourage you if you're interested in learning more about spiritual direction of course you can visit uh, you can visit my website but there's also a, a thing called spiritual directors international they have a website um sdi international um i forget actually right now in this moment if that's the name of the website but if you google sdi international you'll it, it'll pop up and they have lots of information um about spiritual direction and you can also find spiritual director in your area and it's not just christian it's interfaith so you can look up a spiritual direction based spiritual director based on um your particular tradition if you want to um and then of course a lot of times especially in the pandemic you can find directors um that are meeting with people um over zoom um so I just want to encourage you. Um, it's it's not it's not therapy. A spiritual director can't diagnose you or um, do some of that work, but it's almost like therapy for the soul specifically. So um, let me just share a few of the things people talk to me about. I would say I see a lot of people who are um traumatized to have been traumatized and hurt by church and they're trying to heal from that trauma um i see i see a lot of clergy um i see several people who are waking up to the divine feminine after serving a patriarchal god their whole lives and they need someone to talk to about that who's been there um, sometimes I talk to people when they're in a vocational crisis, like, what am I supposed to do with my life next? Um, and sometimes I, um, I talk with people who are just trying to figure out, like, what does it mean to pray? Or I'm pretty fed up with church, but how do I have a spiritual life anyway? So there's a whole host of topics and things that people come to spiritual direction or, and I think it's this really, really lovely way to, um, to just go deep um, in a safe, in a safe environment. So um, Aurelia, I'm wondering if you would come back on and then let me know if you think there's any questions I should answer or if there's anything else that would be helpful for someone to know about spiritual direction um or anything I left out yeah um I mean can you tell us about your journey with it a little bit I'm curious like how you learned about it and how you know you went from nothing to now being a spiritual director like what was your experience like receiving that kind of care yeah, so I, um, my first experience with a director was, um, well, that's not my first long term experience with a director. I, I did a couple of um, sessions before this, but was actually with Janet Davis, who's there in Austin. And um, I, 
I realized that my favorite part of pastoring was doing the one-on-one deep soul work with people, which is how I got interested in this spiritual guidance piece. And I ended up finding this training program called the Hayden Institute, and I loved it. Um, So I just completed, it's a two-year program. I completed it this earlier this year. Um, And I love it because it's, they, I learned about how to interpret dreams. I learned more about the Enneagram. I learned about um, Jungian psychology and the ways um, that we can understand ourselves better through archetypes. Um, And I learned more about the mystical tradition. Anyway, it was really, really, um, there's a lot of breadth and depth to that program. And um, that's really what got me um, kind of going down this path. Yeah. Was that program specifically? Mm-hmm. Um, I can also vouch for Janet Davis. She, I've learned about her through Kindle, and I don't know. Brittany also um, mm-hmm. uh, has had spiritual direction with Janet Davis. She's awesome. Yeah, and Brittany's on the call or on the yeah. conversation. Hey, Brittany. Mm-hmm. Hi, Pam. Um, what else? Do we have any questions? If you have any questions in the comments, just put them in there and we'll respond. But I think that this is just a helpful reminder and a helpful nudge. It's a nudge for me. Um, I haven't really, you know, been um, doing spiritual direction during this pandemic. Things have been so crazy, especially with like deciding what, how you use your time when you have a free moment. Um, if you have kids or if you have a really stressful Mm -hmm. job you know it can be hard to want to take that jump to like use your time that way so this Mm -hmm. is a good reminder for me because the times that I've gone to spiritual direction I have never gone home without some sort of deep encouragement or some sort of revelation that has nudged me forward on my journey so I really appreciate you um bringing this up it's something we haven't really talked about yeah, yeah, and actually, I've had a lot of I've had a lot of new clients during the pandemic because I think people are are hurting, you know, and they're hungry, and um, and I just wanted to add if anyone's listening into this and you'd like to try a session for free, um, you can reach out to me and we can get that set up as well. Um, tell us about the dream, the dream interpretation. You, you talked about that in the sermon that you preached Mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. Has it been a year? Oh, well, last fall, right? I think it was, yeah, it was in the fall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm curious how that's been related to spiritual direction, but also just maybe, um, how that's helpful to your spiritual. Yeah. Um, and Kendall leads a, a, a little dream group for clergy and you guys have been meeting for like this whole year, I think, right? For a while. Yeah. The, I think we started in January <clears throat> or February. Um, and I'm going to start offering more dream groups. Um, I have loved dream interpretation and I, I was, I was talking about this, um, to another church on Sunday and I said, you know, if you haven't heard about dream interpretation, or you haven't done it before, it might sound a little uh, hokey, you know, but it's, it's not, um, what happens with with the dream world is that our unconscious, um, it's like, you know, when you're sleeping, your conscious goes to sleep. And so that gives your unconscious some freedom to start speaking to you, but the unconscious speaks to you in stories and images And so you kind of have to learn the language a little bit in order to know what the unconscious is telling you. And once you start to do it, it ends up being this window into your psyche. So some of the stuff that you're just, for whatever reason, not fully conscious of in your waking life, like maybe you have some resistance or some blinders up, um, those things really start to come to light once you get how to kind of pick the dream apart and and peer into it in a new way. Um, And so that's what we do in our dream group is someone shares a dream and then the the dream circle 
kind of is able to help you see it in a new light. Like when you're the dreamer, sometimes you're just like stuck in the story and you can't see the, the potential um, for what those dreams might be really speaking to you about. And it's just fascinating. I mean, every single time our dream group ends, I, I think the collective feeling is, whoa. <laughs> um, because it's, it's fascinating. And because it's the language of imagery and symbol, often an individual's dream ends up speaking to everybody, kind of the way a piece of art does, you know? Like, I can identify with your dream image because images are so universal. So it ends up, even when you're not interpreting your own dream, you're just learning about someone else's, it'll speak to you too. Um, it's really fascinating. Um, can you like hear a dream, not know the person well and interpret it? No. So I, that, I think that's kind of like a fall. Sometimes you'll see things on the internet that make it sound like that's the way dreams work. But dreams are very, very specific to the individual. So um, I would say it's actually almost impossible to hear a dream and like interpret it without knowing the person and what their associations with the dream are, because your dream is speaking new to you in a language you can understand. <laughs> so what a dream, the same exact, a same similar dream might mean one thing to one person's context and it might have a different meaning to somebody else. So part of the dream interpretation is, um, you can make some guesses, but in terms of whether it's accurate, that's completely up to the dreamer, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. So interesting. Um, I know that a lot of people have had really wild dreams during COVID, so. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so if anyone wants help with their dreams, you can look me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, let's see. Uh, let's look at some of the comments real quick before we get um, going here. Uh, Brittany said, oh, sorry. Brittany said that the dream group is, um, is amazing with you. Yes, the dream group. Um, Tori said, we want you to feel heard and healthy too, pastors. Thank you, Tori. Mm. You love us so well. Um, <clears throat> Brittany, no, okay. Tori said, biblically, dream interpretation is really important in life-giving and healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dreams are really all over the Bible. Um, and actually, I think it's still a way that we hear messages today. If you're willing to kind of dig deep. Yeah. Fran said she's reading Bill Plotkin's Soulcraft. Have you heard of that book, Kendall? Um, oh, uh, that sounds familiar, but I haven't read it. She said it discusses various perspectives on dream interpretation. Very helpful. Mm -hmm. So cool. Thanks for sharing that resource. Um, well, I don't, nobody really asked any questions, but I think that this was a really important reminder and hopefully people will go back and watch. And you can go to Kendall's website also, which I linked below in the comments to uh, get in touch with her if you're, you know, interested in exploring um, some of this kind of work and support her in the process. Um, so yeah, I'm so excited. A couple of people in the comments said they registered for the conference. Yay! For the Nevertheless You Preach conference. So um, thanks for jumping on with us. And um, is there anything else you want to say? Anything about the conference you want to share? Oh, I think the conference is going to be fantastic. So, so please join us. And, um, and the first the Sunday night event is free. So there's really no reason not to. Um, that night, it's going to be Kendra Frazier and um, Tracy Blackman and Nikki Young. And it's going to be fantastic. My cat just joined us. Um, <laughs> And then our workshops are going to be fantastic. I mean, every year our lineup is just phenomenal. And I always want everyone to hear from these women because they're so fantastic. Yes. So. And like, like I said earlier, this, um, the main event this year is completely black le led by black women. And I want to just point out that just because the event is free doesn't mean that it is free for, uh, us to pay them. Um, these are powerhouse women that charge legitimate fees for their work as they should and they are being paid 
and so that I'm just saying that like it, the fact that the conference is offering it for free is really incredible because we need this kind of leadership. We need voices like theirs and we need access to them so that we can learn, so we can deconstruct our, um, you know, our subconscious racist lenses and do our anti-racism work and getting getting the ability to hear from them in this way and not pay pay for it ourselves is um, really, really unique. So mm -hmm. take advantage of the fact that you can sign up for free to go hear from them. Um, and thank you, Kindle, and thank you, Natalie, co-founders and co-directors for making it a free night so that it's accessible for people. Cause I know you guys are paying for that yeah. <laughs> with- Well, um, I will say, I mean, we'll, we happily accept donations. Yes. <laughs> but yes, we want it to be accessible to everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit, I think that's such a huge deal because I'm trying to bring voices into our church and mm -hmm. we can't afford a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a huge deal that, it, that, that we have access to it. Yeah. Anyway. Well, thank you again for everything you do. Your work is so important and is making a difference in people's lives and is helping mm -hmm. us do our justice work. It's helping us do our inner work. Um, it's helping us deconstruct and find healing in a, in a more whole faith. So we're so grateful for you. And I know we'll see you again on something we're doing. One thing okay. or another. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I'm gonna say bye to Facebook and then we'll get off in a minute. Okay, all right. <laughs> Thanks guys for joining us. Bye, thank you everyone.